Today, we have filed a petition for a writ of habeas corpus to the Missouri Supreme Court asking him to turn, overturn his conviction because he is actually innocent. And we are not taking this to court with just our word for it. After review by the Conviction Integrity Unit, and you will hear from later, the Jackson County Prosecutor has also determined that Mr. Strickland is innocent. And every official presented with the materials has agreed that his conviction should be overturned. Because of that, I'm here advocating for Mr. Strickland's freedom and that his conviction um, should be vacated. Most importantly, though, I'm advocating that this man must be freed immediately. My job is to protect the innocent. And often, uh, prosecutors show hubris, right? You've probably seen me show some of that from time to time. And today, um, my job is to apologize. It is important to recognize when the system has made wrongs. And what we did in this case was wrong. So to Mr. Strickland, I am profoundly sorry. I am profoundly sorry for the harm um, that has come to you. It is not, however, just Mr. Strickland that I owe an apology to. It is to the victim's families in this case, uh, to the victim Larry Ingram and his family, to Sherry Black and her family, to John Walker and his family, and even to Cynthia Douglas and her family. She too was a victim. And I suppose that I could stop there, um, but harms like this um, extend beyond criminal defendants and uh, those with the title of victim. It goes to the broader community. And to that end, um, I want to tell this community that I represent um, that I find this mistake in this system to be profound, to be one um, that I should take every ounce of energy I have to correct. I am sorry for um, this mistake made by this system. There unfortunately is no timeline when these, when these filings happen, right? So the next steps will be up to the Missouri Supreme Court, what those steps are and what they look like. So. How often does something, well, you have something to say. Yeah, I was just going to add, Mr. Strickland is one of the few, um, I think, that was convicted under this hard 50 rule in Missouri. And um, so there is a potential for his release, I think, uh, you know, under that hard 50 rule, having served 43 years. So some of that is still in question about, you know, how that time gets compounded. Um, but I think what's clear, um, Mr. Strickland has made very clear, he, he seeks full exoneration rather than just release. I think that um, I certainly owed him that phone call and, um, and he, I believe what I, how I would describe it is he gave me a lot of grace in receiving uh, that call uh, from me from this office and he didn't have to. So um, I guess that's what I would say. Yeah. If you have all this overwhelming evidence to say that he's Innocent, what, what is the holdup? Why is he still there? <laughs> uh, no, it actually goes back a little bit to the question of, you know, if it's so difficult, why do it? I think there's a lot of things that we can learn, which is also why is the process so difficult and does it have to be? Uh, one of the things we talk about a lot in our office is a, a law was passed back in 1996, which was called the Anti-Terrorism and Effective Death Penalty Act, which said, made all these technicalities that kept people out of being able to file. And so now if they file, it's an argument about whether or not they even get to be in court and not about the issues that they are raising, right? So in the terms of, of Mr. Strickland, he's filed other things before to say on his own, pro se, I'm innocent, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. And the argument is always, well, do you even get to be in court and not does this evidence show you're innocent or is this the right thing to do? So I think that there are things that we can be thinking about, which is how do we change a system to get to the merits, to get to what matters, right? And make it, um, make it more effective for what we're looking to do.